Hello, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. Today we'll be talking about going to audio school, some mixing tips, and editing in the MIDI editor. Before we get started, I want to thank you all for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing the videos. It really means a lot. And a special shout out to my top patrons, Mark, Gerald, Marco, John Mark, Igor, Luca, Ryan, Matt, John, Brian, and Glenn. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being the best patrons. If you'd like to support the channel and also get some extra bonus content like the Reaper Blog Patron Show, go to patreon.com slash the Reaper Blog and sign up as a patron. I'd love to have you. First question comes from Michael. One of my kids starts college shortly. He wants to study music production and is aware that the industry isn't one where jobs and income are as easy to find as others. I've pointed him to people like yourself who carve out a niche that is unique. If you could tell your 18-year-old self something about a career in audio, what would it be? I went to audio school, but I didn't do it directly out of high school. I had a couple years to uh, live on my own, to work, to do things like figuring out a budget, learn how to cook. That really helped me focus on who I am, what my interests are, and, um, and when the opportunity to go to an audio school came up. Um, it was very clear to me that that's what I wanted to do. Many of my classmates in the first semester, um, they were directly out of high school. They didn't know how to handle having a job, going to school full time, um, living in a new city, all these sorts of things. And uh, the class size quickly went from 60 to about 28 students by the end of it. So um, it was really tough, but it was a great experience for me. In terms of what I learned about audio, it really set me up for working in a studio. And at the time, it seemed like that's what I wanted to do. I started on the internship path and found that that's not really what I wanted to do. Uh, later on, um, I ended up in um, sort of a teaching position, doing one-on-one -on -one lessons. And that was really fun, really interesting for me. And it was really nice to take my knowledge and uh, help someone directly with that. And um, long story short, here I am doing uh, videos on YouTube, helping people. It's not where I thought I would end up with my career, but still it feels like I'm just getting started. I have lots of time ahead. If you're coming into the audio industry thinking that you'll have a stable uh, career and lots of money coming in and all those sorts of things, I think you'd be very wrong, but I think you can have a very comfortable life and, uh, and most importantly, do something that you love. And, you know, that's why we're here. That's why we're uh, learning about this stuff constantly and why I'm trying to share my knowledge with you guys. So more specifically, my advice is to not jump right from high school into college, um, figure out who you are as a person. Joining the audio industry at 22 years old, 25 years old, you're not going to be at a disadvantage because you'll be stronger as a person. Next question comes from Matt. Any chance of you exploring the buffering preferences in a tutorial? Seems like some of the settings may be better for low latency recording with effects and other settings better for projects with a lot of tracks, etc. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, there are different settings that you would, might need to change depending on the types of projects that you do. If you're doing a lot of recording through effects and you need that low latency monitoring, there are some certain settings that affect that. And then there's other things where if you're working on a film mix or something like that, and there's lots of data that needs to be processed instantaneously um, there's some things to manage that as well. So let's have a look at these in Reaper. There's two or three different types of buffers in use in Reaper. Uh, the first one is in the preferences, and we're going to look at the one for setting your audio device buffer size. So this number here, request block size, that's going to set the interface buffer size. This is going to set the latency for any live inputs and outputs of your system, whether they're audio or MIDI. This also directly affects the CPU performance. So 512 is kind of a middle of the range setting, quite a lot of latency and uh, a fair amount of CPU use. If I set this down to 64, the CPU use is going to increase, but my latency is going to be basically instantaneous. Uh, I can play a guitar chord and not have any noticeable delay going through a, an amp, a cabinet, all those sorts of things inside a Reaper and then coming back to my ears. So depending on the size of your project and what you're doing in the project, this is a good place to start with optimizing the performance. If you're not recording anymore, you don't need to have a low block size here. So you can set that to 512 or 1024. 
and get a lot more uh, headroom as far as um, processing power at a Reaper. The next preference is the buffering preference here. This sets up Reaper CPU use um, or the way that it uses the CPU. These first couple settings here are going to change for every person. You can have this on auto detect. I personally don't set it to auto detect because uh, after some experimentation, I found that having that off was better. If I have this on, the second setting is going to go to eight instead of six. I have a quad core processor with hyper threading. It sees it as eight cores. And so I would set this to six, which gives a little more headroom for other processes. And then jumping down to the bottom, allow live effects multiprocessing on two CPUs. In my mind, if I take away two from this one, I, I can give myself two CPUs to use for live effects. And this is just something I figured out through experimentation. For my system, it seemed to work the best. I tried having this on one, I tried having this on four CPUs. I had this on auto detect, all these to just try to optimize performance. And this is where I ended up. So everything that we've looked at so far has been for signal processing and how the CPU is used for that. The other options here are for media buffering. So media buffer size is how long are we giving Reaper to get the audio off of the hard drives and then start playing it back. Um, the default size is 1200 milliseconds. To me, that's quite a long time. These two settings here for the media buffer size and the pre-buffer affect that short delay you get when you hit the space bar and the audio comes out. If there are no effects on the tracks, uh, this number directly affects how long it takes for the audio to start coming out. So my personal settings for these are half of the defaults. This is the setting that I found has worked really well for both my video projects and all of my audio projects. So having this at half of the default has worked really well on my 2015 MacBook Pro. Not a high-end system by any means, but these defaults are really made for um, people with lower powered CPUs. These defaults really haven't changed since I started using Reaper like 10 years ago. If you go in here and change all the defaults to about half of what is recommended, it's going to feel a lot faster. There's one other buffer size that you need to be aware of, and that's for the rendering preference block size to use when rendering. I like to keep it at 1024. I haven't done a lot of experimenting with this, but I've seen some people on the forum and things uh, run into some plugins that just aren't working quite right when rendering. And this is one factor where the sound could change or just plugins don't work when rendering. So I keep mine at 1024. Uh, if you have this blank, then it's going to use the audio device block size. Whenever you're rendering something through the render window that has effects on it, it's going to use that value. For me, that has worked really well. And hopefully this will help you as well. Next question comes from David J. Could you clarify your approach to pan laws as it applies to mono tracks? It seems to me that leaving it at zero by default is fine until you mono sum any tracks that are panned left and right. I tend to lose the hard pan tracks when I switch the master to mono. To be honest, I don't really think about it that much. Um, I always just keep my mixer at uh, zero dB pan law, which is the default. And uh, anytime I've changed it, it's always ended up giving me more trouble than just leaving it alone. The main time when that makes a difference is when you are panning, uh, like automating panning, and it, you need it to sound a certain way. Each pan law will sound different um, going from center to either left or right. That makes a difference. But if the pans never change in the mix, then it's not really going to make a difference. You're going to set it to where it sounds right in stereo uh, or in mono if you prefer to start your mix in mono. And when you flip to the other way, it's the levels are going to change naturally. And the actual pan law doesn't change that. So let's look at these guitars in this song, and we'll experiment with the pan law. So if I change the pan law here to, let's say, minus six, it gets quieter in stereo. So I'm going to have to compensate for that by turning this up. If I put this in mono,
If I put this at the default, now it's too loud. Turn it down. Go back to stereo. Obviously there's a volume difference here, but to me, I'm just gonna make up that difference by using the volume control. Let's hear this with the drums and guitar, and we'll set the guitar volume in mono with the, let's say, the 6 dB pan law. All right, so let's say I like it like that. We'll come out of mono. And that works fine. Let's reset that. I'll go into zero dB pan law. Set this in mono. Come out of mono. To me, it's essentially the same thing. Pan law doesn't really affect the loss you would get with mono summing. Next question comes from Ferna471. I have a question related to MIDI writing with a mouse. Let's say I have a bar filled with 16th notes. Is there a way I can select any odd or even notes easier than clicking each? Yeah, you can do that using the built-in MIDI filter function. I find it pretty confusing and clunky. Um, I spend a lot extra time uh, trying to figure that stuff out every time I use it. There's actually two scripts from uh, Reaper users that would be really helpful for this. Uh, Locasana's MIDI Note Selector or MPL's Note Selector.lua. These are both very similar tools, but they kind of approach things in a different way. But either one would be really great for selecting like every other or every third note or something like that. And next, I have three questions that are very similar from different people. Um, after my recent mixing video. Jonas asks, how have you made your mixer show the folder tracks like that? How have you made yours so that the tracks in the folder are smaller and the parent track has effects beside it? It's awesome. Evgen asks, how can you make the folder track bigger in the mixer than the others? And Audio by Sam asks, I love how your folders look with that SWS extension. Do you have a video on that? I'm yet to get my feet wet with SWS. So my folder tracks here, look like this. This is the sidebar layout. The theme I'm using is the Locasana's default 5.0 nitpicky edition. But if I was in the default theme, it would basically look the same because the, the theme I'm using is based on that. To change layouts, that's the mixer panel layout. And so there's uh, standard, standard sidebar, small, small sidebars, Etc. There's different options here. This is going to change all of my mixer tracks. In the screen sets and layouts window, and we, if we're on the layouts tab, we can set the global layouts here. We can also set the selected ones. So if I select this one and uh, set, set here, we can change this. So I can set this to large, set this to strip, set this to um, session mixer, etc. If we want this to automatically change, it's in the extensions menu with auto color icon. So I have a filter set for folder, and if it's a folder, it's going to use the MCP layout small sidebar. And here you just type in the exact name of that layout. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like to see me answer in this series, please leave a comment below this video and um, I'll try to get to them. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.